What's up guys? Thanks for coming to Gaming Canada with me this week in Homebrew. Switch Edition is going to cover everything and anything that is going on with the Nintendo Switch. From every single firmware version being hackable to two different custom firmwares soon to be available, save backup and editing, layered FS support for on-the-fly game modding, and the first cartridge backups are now able to be run from a hacked Switch. In one year, the Switch has reached the level of the 3DS homebrew scene, which took well over three years to get where it is today. Buckle up, strap in, because this is going to be one interesting video. First off, you guys are looking at some 3D printed RCM jigs. Now RCM stands for recovery mode and basically from here on out if you hear me say RCM or jig, you guys know what I'm talking about. So recovery mode is essentially a mode that the switch can boot into as long as two of the pins on the right Joy-Con are shorted out. So as you can see these have two little pins that can slide into the right side of your Joy-Con slot on your switch and it moves into a slot that bridges a connection and this allows your system to boot into RCM mode or recovery mode which then allows you to send payloads through the USB-C slot and perform homebrew activities on your switch. Now because this is a hardware exploit it does mean that Nintendo will not be able to patch this on any current firmware so if you own a Nintendo switch doesn't matter what firmware it is on you're gonna be able to always get homebrew using one of these RCM jigs. So now that you guys know about recovery mode, I'm going to talk about a few of the custom firmwares that are being developed by hacking teams. We're over here on the Switch Hacksing subreddit, and this is a post created by DJ505Gaming, and it's a quick frequently asked questions thread that allows you to learn about the different exploits as well as the different custom firmwares being developed for the Nintendo Switch. Right off the bat, using that RCM jig to exploit your Nintendo Switch is basically making use of Fusei Gile, which is Reswitch Team's free and open source exploit. Now the Reswitch Team is basically the team you want to support the most as everything they're doing is free and open source and not related to piracy. But in case you were a lover of piracy, Team Executor's mod chip is basically just Fusei Gile on a stick and it costs $30. You're still going to need an RCM jig to be able to launch it, so you know, it's not too much different. You might as well just wait for Fusei Gile to be fully implemented so that we can run Atmosphere. Now Atmosphere is the free custom firmware to being developed by the ReSwitch team. And we'll go ahead and talk about it a little bit more here. So ReSwitch Team's custom firmware is set to release by the end of summer and definitely the most recommended option. Think of a similar custom firmware to what Luma was on the 3DS, a series of improvements and enhancements that will allow both a ton of customization as well as new useful features. You can currently run sort of a dumbed down version of Atmosphere called Hecate. I'm not sure again if I'm saying that correctly, but that seems to be the main way that everyone is launching into the homebrew launcher at the moment. Atmosphere is getting a lot of work behind the scenes up and running, so I'm going to be touching on that in a second. Let's just real quick touch on Team Executor's custom firmware known as the SX Pro. So the SX Pro mod chip comes with their SX OS software and this is basically going to be their own custom firmware for the Nintendo Switch which you launch from their mod chip or little dongle type thing. If you guys are more interested in Team Executor's custom firmware method, I do have a quick demo video in one of my last videos. So now you guys know about Team Executor's mod chip, you know about Fusei Gile basically being the entry point for all homebrew on the Nintendo Switch. And you know about Atmosphere Custom Firmware, Hecate Custom Firmware, and Team Executor's SXOS. Let's now go ahead and see what the developers are up to and if anything cool has been going on. First up, here is a name you should recognize from the 3DS hacking scene, as well as even a program you should recognize from the 3DS hacking scene. We're over here on Bernardo Giordano's Checkpoint GitHub repository, and as you can see, this is a Switch-only release for Checkpoint. Now basically, Checkpoint is going to allow you to back up your game saves from your Nintendo Switch. Here's a basic look at Checkpoint. As you can see, it resembles the 3DS version very, very much so. Honestly, I find this amazing that one of the very first things that was successfully done on the Switch was save backup and restoration. Now I'm going to touch on that more in just a second here. Again, over on the Switch Hacksing subreddit, and as you can see, this is a post 
by lesking72. It's now possible to edit your Fallout Shelter save using Checkpoint in an online save editor. So apparently Fallout Shelter uses the same save files between all versions. So if you rip your Vault X.save from your Switch using Checkpoint, you can then go over to your computer and edit it using this online editor. Seriously, this is so cool. I love save editing. We're over here on GR Animated's YouTube page, and as you can see, they have edited Super Mario Odyssey and found some unreleased costumes inside of it. So they were able to use Checkpoint to rip the save and then found a bunch of hidden costumes that were maybe going to be time released in the future. As you can see, there is a zombie outfit here. Maybe this is coming out around Halloween, as well as a Santa outfit. Maybe that comes out around Christmas and even a race car outfit. I'm just gonna go ahead and hit play here. And as you can see, here are a couple of the different new costumes this is the race car driver that I was talking about. Pretty darn cool. Here is Santa Mario. Absolutely awesome. What do you guys think? This is honestly one of my favorite things about homebrew and hacking is finding Easter eggs and things maybe that aren't quite released yet in games. While on the topic of save editing, we're over here on GBA Temp and this is a thread created by JP230 and it is a Breath of the Wild save editor. Now this is an actual homebrew app which means you don't even need to use Checkpoint. All you have to do is install this to your Nintendo Switch, launch your Breath of the Wild with the current user, wait until the title screen, exit and close the game and then open up the save editor app and you can select your save file slot and then go ahead and edit a few different things. As you can see, the latest version now mounts the save directory and you don't have to use Checkpoint to extract your save, but you probably want to use Checkpoint to make a backup. Now I know a ton of people are always asking for a Breath of the Wild save editor on the Nintendo Switch, much like the Breath of the Wild trainer over on Wii U. So this is about as close as you guys are getting at the exact moment in time. Maybe go check this out if you have a homebrew enabled device. Over here on Michael Sire's Twitter page, and as you can see, he's still got more debugging to do, but Layered FS seems to be working. Now, this was a few days ago, and since then, Layered FS is almost fully implemented into Atmosphere custom firmware. Now, he's got a quick demo here where he replaces a texture in Super Mario Odyssey, and it says start in Atmosphere mode, but we're going to do you one better and show you guys some really cool stuff people are doing with Layered FS. Now, just in case you guys don't know, Layered FS is basically on-the-fly file switching, so if you have a game and say you want to replace a texture in that game you put that replace texture on your SD card and layered FS tells the game instead of looking in its game files to look on your SD card and load that texture instead so that is why layered FS is awesome for mods because you don't actually have to edit anything all you have to do is have the files accessible to your device now layered FS doesn't only work with textures this is going to allow us to do some awesome things basically any on-the-fly file switching I'll show you guys in a quick second so here's one right off the bat basically right after layered fs was implemented even just slightly hefty mods went ahead and created a super mario odyssey mod which put the sunshine sprite from mario sunshine into the game how awesome is that so that was the first mod that i happened to see from layered fs now if we want to take it a step further we're over here on sven de hacker 64's youtube page and they've gone ahead and tried to put custom music into super mario kart deluxe now currently in their test the game loaded the original background music but then went ahead and loaded the custom music but ridiculously sped it up so as you guys can hear there's some super fast what sounds like Kirby Dreamland music playing in the background it's pretty awesome that you can use layered FS in this way now this next video guys again is using layered FS as you can see this person is about to launch super one more jump demo now just watch what happens when they launch this game Mojang, what the heck? Basically, they've now loaded Minecraft. So they are using Layered FS to tell the Switch to load a completely different game. Now, what I'm telling you guys here is that backups are now possible on the Switch. You can now play backups. This next video, we're over on X0X0's YouTube page. I'll go ahead and put a link in the description to their channel. But as you can see, they have Atmosphere backups working again. And this is with Bayonetta 2. So as you can see, they're going to launch Pokemon Quest here. And then I'll skip ahead a little bit. And as you can see, 
Bayonetta 2 is actually what loaded. How ridiculous is this, guys? So with Layered FS being able to run backups, Ray decided to try to generate their own record data for installed games. So these three games they don't actually own, but they managed to install them, and the Switch thinks that they're there. Now at this point in time, when this was released on the 16th of June, we thought that maybe we might be able to install games directly to the Switch by ourselves. But it turns out that just the next day, Ray went ahead and made this post, and it turns out that the installer they created that was going to install games from file didn't actually work and it grabbed the game directly from the eShop. But basically it doesn't allow you to launch them because when you launch a game, your Nintendo Switch checks with the eShop to see if you actually own that game on your Nintendo account. So Nintendo has beefed up security a little bit for their eShop, although you can still seem to grab downloads from it, you're not going to be able to play them at this point in time. Now hopefully in the future custom firmware will be able to go around that check and completely disregard it. So in short, Ray almost had backups working fully on the Nintendo Switch, but turns out it didn't work at all. Over on the Switch Hacksing subreddit again, and as you can see, Sires M sending out a PSA on piracy-related bans soon. By the way, I'll be putting out a PSA letter today about a few anti-piracy measures for online and why you'll basically get insta-banned if you're a misbehaving user. Now, Cyrus would know a thing or two about this because of this post not too long ago. Heh, one of my consoles finally got banned. Now, this actually created a massive storm of fake news on the internet. As you can see, if I go over to Google here, Nintendo bans hacker online services, bans hacker, Nintendo starts banning Switch hackers, Nintendo banning players who hack their Switches. Basically, Shiny Quagsire and Michael Cyrus were the only two people to be banned from Nintendo online services, and the whole internet went up in arms saying that if you hack your Nintendo, you are going to get banned. Now, this is not likely, but we are going to go check out Michael Cyrus' post, his little PSA, telling us what and what not to do. Okay, guys, so here I am about to scare the living heck out of you with a PSA for the strong anti-piracy measures that have been implemented by Nintendo for online. So if you want to go ahead and pirate all the Nintendo games and then play online, you're definitely going to want to read this. I'm going to go ahead and skim over it real quick. Basically, Nintendo has implemented some very strong anti-piracy measures in this regard. They can actually perfectly detect whether a digital copy of the game has been legitimately purchased. This means this is no Wii U, this is no 3DS over here, guys. If you pirate a game, Nintendo knows about it. Here's a quick overview. Here's what happens when you attempt to connect online in a game in the abstract. Number one, your console verifies that it can connect to the internet. Two, your console verifies that it can get a device authorization token to go online. Basically, a token saying that it's not banned. Your console authorizes the Nintendo account being signed into. And four, your console obtains an application authorization token for the specific title being played. So after it determines whether or not your actual device is not banned or not, it determines whether your account is not banned or not, and then it determines if the application that you're trying to run actually has a token on their servers for you being able to play it. So this is basically three different checks, one for your Switch itself, one for your account, and one for the actual game. There's a lot more info that I could go into here, but it might just be easier if you guys read it over yourself, because I don't think I'm going to be able to explain any of this technical jargon to you. So basically, in short, don't pirate games. It will lead to your console being banned from going online, and every banned early hardware revision switch is an enormous waste. So basically what he's saying here is if you're going to go ahead and pirate and play games online, you're screwed. It's basically how it's going to go. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed. Thanks for tuning in to this week in Homebrew Switch Edition. I'm sure lots more stuff is going to be coming out here in the near future. I'm hoping to get my hands on a Switch very soon, so I'll be able to do some of this stuff right here. Are you guys scared of piracy? Are you going to go ahead and pirate stuff on your Switch anyway and maybe just not go online? Who knows? What is going on? Go down in the comments. Let me know. If you liked the video, go ahead and hit like. If you disliked it, hit that dislike. If you wanted to subscribe for more, that'd be okay too. I will catch you guys soon. Much love. Peace.